The UK is currently experiencing an energy crisis. With renewable energy becoming so popular and bills remaining sky high, the focus on solar and battery systems are at the forefront of people's minds. Batteries. Money we are actually saving. Extremely good. Solar panels. Bring customers' energy bills right down. In this video, we're going to break down battery storage in the UK and help maximise your return on investment. Stay to the end to see how this one simple solution could save you years on your payback time. And to answer the age-old question, does size really matter? Before we get started on batteries, let's talk safety. The majority of batteries are now lithium iron phosphate. They're cobalt free, making it completely non-flammable. The key point is to have a reputable company like Soulfield to carry out the installation. The majority of incidents in the industry are a result of bad workmanship. Many now have a battery management system that uses sensors to monitor how the battery is performing and also monitors the temperature. The main purpose of battery storage is to maximize self-consumption by storing excess solar generation that would otherwise be sold to the grid for a rate much lower than what you would buy it in for. The battery helps this by storing the energy to use when the solar isn't producing, such as evening and early morning. We can also prioritize certain loads when the solar is producing excess. We can send the power either directly to the battery, to a hot water tank via an energy diverter, to an EV, or even to a heat pump. The average solar and battery system in the UK is around 12,000 pounds, with an expected payback of around six to eight years. This would compromise a system of around four kilowatts peak PV power and between five to 10 kilowatt hours of battery storage. The first point is location. As an installer, we like to install in the garage. We've got plenty of space for the equipment and it makes life a lot easier in the future for maintenance purposes. On average, we need a space of around one meter by two meters to install the required kit. If you don't have a garage, it's not all bad. We can install in the home, excluding any loft spaces as it can get too hot. Batteries can weigh up to 130 kilos, and I certainly wouldn't want that above my head at night. If you don't have space inside the home, we can install outside, as long as the kit's not in direct sunlight. The cold weather can, however, decrease efficiency. The most optimised way to utilise a battery is to combine it with a solar setup to maximise self-consumption. If you'd like to know more about how solar could benefit you, click the video in the top corner. So you've got the space for battery storage, but what size battery storage is right for you? The two main factors when designing a system is A, overall consumption of the property, and B, whether you're having solar PV or not. In this video, we are focusing more on battery storage. If you want to learn more about sizing a solar system, there will be a link in the description below. When sizing a battery with solar, we would look at your worst day's solar generation and make up the remaining with battery storage. We find that your winter generation will be around 25% of your summer generation, Based on the UK average of around 8 kilowatt hours per day and your solar only self-consumption being around 2 kilowatt hours, we would recommend a 6 kilowatt hour battery and this should prevent importing any expensive peak rate electricity. If budget allows, we would recommend oversizing the battery. This way we can carry over stored excess generation to the coming days if the solar production is going to be poor. 1. Some battery systems offer backup power in the event of a power cut. Two. Grid trading is becoming more popular with manufacturers offering certain software that allows the kit to import electricity at really low prices to then export at the high prices, making you a tidy profit. Three, the battery system becomes smarter over time, monitoring your home's usage patterns, average solar generation, and even takes into account the weather to determine whether or not to use solar power or import from the grid. A DC battery works with a hybrid inverter that looks after both solar and battery. DC batteries are more efficient than AC because the DC generated from the panels goes straight to the battery. DC battery also allows us to utilise more of the solar generated. For example, if we have 8 kilowatts peak DC power from the panels and a 5 kilowatt hybrid inverter, 5 kilowatts of energy can go around the house. Instead of the remaining 3 kilowatts being wasted as heat, it goes directly to the battery. An AC battery requires its own inverter which can lead to slightly higher costs and can be up to 15% less efficient. The benefit of having an AC coupled battery is that you don't need solar to utilize offbeat tariffs. And if working alongside solar, you have the potential to pull power from two inverters, giving you coverage for higher loads. AC coupled is also suitable for retrofit systems. We would recommend a hybrid battery system as it's more efficient, utilizes more of what you generate and tends to be slightly cheaper. The tip I promised at the start of the video is to utilize cheap off-peak energy tariffs where we charge the battery over the cheap period and discharge during the high peak hours. This can all be automated and be done with or without solar. In summary, we would always recommend installing a battery system alongside your solar PV as it maximises your self-consumption and allows you to benefit from any cheap rate electricity you may have. 
Even if you can't have a solar PV system installed, a battery only system is potentially a fantastic investment. Based on the numbers on screen, a £4,000 investment could give you a 17.75% return on investment per annum. At the beginning, we asked, does size really matter? Like the common response you get, it's not about size, it's how you use it.